13, lucky number 13 here tonight. Uh, October 13th, this is the uh, 31 days of masks here. And uh, tonight, I'm just going to go over two of my favorite masks um, of all time. They are both very rare, but one of them is super, super rare. And uh, they were both debuted at the same exact time in the same catalog in the same year on the same page. And the year was 1977. Two masks are, uh, I'm looking at them right now, are these two creatures, crazy, I guess you could say mythological type creatures if they were on a human head. And uh, man, both copies I have, both of the copies I have are freaking pristine. So get ready to go back to 1977 for the Don Post Hydroloid and the badass Don Post Sargoth. So I'm gonna show you the 1977 page, the catalog page. And one, the Sargoth, the Cobra, was basically, obviously, a big, giant Cobra head that fits over your human head. But it is definitely one of the most unique and crazy Halloween masks ever produced. It's a giant snake's head, you know, that goes on top of a human. Then you got the Hydroloid, which is definitely one of the rarest masks in the, the whole Don Post line. This is one of the rarest pieces there is. Um, for many years, I probably only knew of maybe one copy. And then, luckily, I was digging around in a friend's house with uh, an amazing collection, and we found this thing in a box, brand new. Never, probably hasn't seen the light of the day since the 70s or early 80s, and it was absolutely pristine. And I about fell over because even the, get out of there. Even the, um, re there was recast of this thing. Even those were rare, but this is crazy that a Hydroloid popped up. So the Hydroloid was always hanging out in a swimming pool. Some guy was wearing it in a swimming pool on the catalog photo. And uh, it's based off of like a squid type creature. And uh, there's actually a movie that came out that had creatures that looked just like this. Uh, I gotta think of the film. Hopefully I can think of it before I put this video together tonight. But man, this is obviously just a made-up aquatic creature into a uh, humanoid, you know, from the deep, the hydroloid. Hands down, one of the rarest masks in, in all of Don Post uh, history. So back to the Sargoth. Sargoth the Cobra. These masks, um, they used to pop up from time to time for sale. These have become pretty rare. There are new castings out there. From a smaller mold that was available in the past maybe five years or so but the originals have great great size they're nice and big and uh i'm telling you these are becoming very scarce um i don't remember the last time i saw a real one pop up they sold three versions of this mask um in three different color schemes first was like a beige color scheme um which is a, a very rare version compared to the green one. The green one's probably the most common. And then around 1982 or 83, they came out with a silver version, which is just as rare as that, that other uh, beige version. You never see original silver ones, I mean, ever. If you're gonna see a Sargoth pop up for sale, it's probably gonna be the green one. And it's, it's even though it's just the green one, it's still one of the coolest masks of all time. Look at this crazy thing. I mean, that's, that's pretty wild. This is a brand new copy, tagged, probably never worn, uh, from a costume shop. When I got my hands on it in auction, um, I sent that along with the Hydroloid to my buddy to get them foam filled. But uh, <clears throat> these were always, in the catalog, I would stare at those weird catalog pictures. One of, the, one of the coolest things about Don Post was if you got your hands on the catalogs or even looked at the old ads, um, you'd see pictures of the masks, but the catalogs had people wearing them. And then they put capes on and stuff and hold props and they become very strange looking catalog photos. And it's because of those weird photos that sometimes I wanted that mask because the catalog photo was so strange. I just had to have the mask. So in this case, 
I had to have a Sargoth because of the cool, you know, picture with the guy wearing it with the robe and everything. Sold me as a young kid, and uh, man, I'm so glad I picked this one up because it's it's absolutely pristine, and they are becoming extremely scarce. I highly doubt you'll ever see another one of these pop up in many years to come, but a lot of people, when they see this mask, they'll say, is that from Dreamscape? And I'm like, no, this predates the film Dreamscape, although it totally reminds me of that crazy 80s movie, you know? I'm sure a lot of you will remember the snake creature towards the end in Dreamscape, and it was uh, similar to that. I wondered if, God, when did Conan come out? Conan the Barbarian. Remember um, the snakes in there, the big snakes and all that? I wonder, that, that had to come out after this mask was produced. I can't remember off the top of my head right now, but it makes me wonder. But just a badass, badass mask. I need to ask, um, I need to get the history on this one a little more to see who sculpted it. I can't remember right now who did sculpt the Sargoth, but it's, uh, it's pretty wild. Tonight I just want to show you quickly this will be a quick video um just two of my favorite masks that are really strange creatures and really really hard to find especially that that thing the uh the sargoth and there's one other mask out there by don post that had little like you call them fangs or talons or tentacles that were glued in separately they were cast separately and put put into the mask they actually kind of pop in and out. I don't think they're glued, but they fit in there and have like a little groove around them. But they uh, were one of the masks, one of the few masks by Don Post that actually had a separate piece that was attached to the mask. To cast that in one piece would, would have been a nightmare. And uh, they would have probably, you know, many, many failed casting attempts trying to get that all in one shot, trying to get that nice rubber to cast from that piece of the head down would be a nightmare <clears throat> like I was saying this hydroloid is probably the nicest one there is and uh he's you may not be able to tell but he's got some like greenish colors greenish gray colors I airbrush in him he he ended up being a lot cooler in person than just that catalog picture when I finally saw him I got to see everything on the back of it because this was all a mystery for years <clears throat> i was just going off by one little picture you know and then i saw a recast out there from the front in a photo but just a weird mask and uh i'm guessing it probably wasn't a great seller let's face it it's not the greatest sculpt in the world you know it's it's just a bizarre sea creature but i think it's pretty awesome because it's so hard to find i should mention that the first like tannish brown version that came out which is super rare that was uh painted by a guy by the name of wallace who was a special effects uh, makeup artist back in the day he worked on the fly naked lunch return of the jedi but he actually worked at uh, don post studios for a short time and that wallace paint job um i had modern copies of this mask made by the tharps uh, when they were available and I did a Wallace version. I even did a cool glow-in-the-dark version that was pretty badass. I shouldn't have sold that thing, man. I mean, I'm what's what's not cooler than a glow-in-the-dark cobra head, you know? I don't know. But, so, uh, if you're lucky out there, you'll run across those newer castings. Like I said, they're smaller than these, but they're super detailed. And the paint jobs will all be killer because they're done by the Tharps. Oops. I did own one Silver Sargoth, the 83 version. I had one that was just in kind of crappy shape. Needed to be fixed up. Needed to be foam filled. I gave up on it. I should have kept that too and fixed it. But man, if you guys ever see that Silver Cobra pop up, um, let me know somehow. Even the brown one. And uh, if you see one that looks super mint, super nice, and it's a different color than this, it's probably the new one. So just if you find one, you can still send it to me, but just know if it's easily found, it's probably the new one. So, this is a really short but sweet touch on two of the coolest and strangest Don Post masks from the late 70s. They came out together, and here they're going to stay together. Oh, jeez. Tomorrow, I want to get more in-depth on something. I'm, I'm 
there's so many possibilities down here. Like I walk down here, like this will be easy. I look around, I'm like, it's not easy. And I, uh, I definitely have the last day, the last two days in my mind, I know exactly what I'm gonna do to close out the 30th and 31st. So it's gonna be really cool. Um, be ready for that. Good stories coming up for sure on uh, history and how I got stuff with those two days especially. Um, so, like I said, tonight's a short one, which is no big deal. We got way more to go and uh, a lot more to cover in this room. So I'll see you guys tomorrow for number 14.